G'day guys, Brendan here from On Point. If you've wanted to know what it takes to go chase Taylor in the surf on lures, then this is the episode for you. Go get yourself a beer, potentially some nibbles, because there's going to be a whole lot of information crammed into this short little episode. Here we go. So chasing Taylor on lures in the surf has got to be one of my favorite forms of fishing. And it's as complicated as you want to make it, but it could also be as basic as you want to make it. And I'm going to show you why. But what the idea of today's episode is, is not only to show you the gear that we use, but also run a few clips just showing you um, us using the gear, some fish caught on the gear. Um, and of course, some little tips and techniques of what to look for in specific situations. So. Where I usually start is with the combo. Now combos can range anything from, you know, a, a 3000 size reel on a seven foot rod up to as big as you want to take it. But we choose to keep it really quite light, okay? When I say light, we don't want heavy combos that are just gonna cast your arms off um, all day long and, and cause fatigue. So the two combos we're using at the moment is of course, sorry, just let me rub my rod. The um, LV Orbiter um, 100 spins here with an LV Orbiter 100 spin reel or the Orbiter 100 rod here with a 200 reel. Now, the length of these rods, 2.1 meters, roughly seven foot. Cast weight is fine. Look, we're casting up to sort of 40 odd grams with it. I don't suggest to go much bigger, um, but look, they cast well and they catch a lot of fish. Um, the lures. Now the lures is a one that is going to capture a lot of anglers and of course it's going to divide them at the exact same time. You know, stick baits, metals, plugs, poppers, um, even soft plastics, the choice is yours. I generally find that if I want the best success, good quality stick baits are the way to go. Now stick baits, you know, you head down to your local BCF and see your local hitchhiker um, and, and get some Helco sly dogs or, or even one of my favorite lures from BCF, or well, this one's a bit dirty because we've been spinning all morning, is the, the little Nomad Dartwing 130. Now, this is a fantastic lure because not only can you work it a bit deeper, but with a slow retrieve, because it's got these little fins on the head here, she comes up the top and holds the head out of the water and splashes along because it's actually got a tiny little cup face. But look, let me tell you one flaw with this particular lure, which you, you need to do immediately is they do come with twin singles brilliant but take your front single off and the reason you want to do that is simply because the neck of this lure here is so fine that when the when this single on the front hook keeper swings up around it grabs and then tangles on the body and you're only using one anyway so look I simply take that front uh, front uh, single off I'll replace it with a treble or today we were playing with fish over shallow reef so we took it off altogether and it saves us getting snagged now let's not keep banging on about that one other lures, as you can see here on our other rod here, we've got a Zip Baits Monsoon Breaker, another all-time favourite with almost any tailor angler. In fact, I don't know many tailor anglers that don't have them. Um, you've got your Zip Bait Boons, and I mean, as you can see by this one, it's been absolutely destroyed by Taylor. Um, look, it's my favourite lure probably when it comes to shallow diving minnows in the surf. Um, you can't go past a good tangled tackle box. Um, ooh, there we go. 27 gram Tasmanian Devil. Now keep in mind, these aren't good for super long casts because they catch the wind a lot and they float. But what they're good for is when you've got a close in gutter and you need a slow retrieve um, and something that's just going to really get a wide, wide swing action. Um, they work t exceptionally well, exceptionally well. Kind, kind of like the old Shimano wax wings, except Australian built and made. Bloody can't go past that. Zip baits SSMs is another big one for us. Um, look, as I said, the zip bait lure range speaks for itself. The Helco Sly Dogs. Now, if you're on a bit more of a budget, um, the Sly Dogs are perfect. We've seen them as cheap as sort of, well, I've actually been told today, eight bucks on clearance, but usually around the $16 mark, opposed to your zip baits and your, your Nomads, which are the $30 plus. But when it comes to my ultimate all-time stick bait, it's a stick bait I don't actually have here to show you because I lost them this morning. And that's the CID Shiver Stick. 
when it comes to stick baits i think if you want the ultimate all-round performer for all up the coast it used to be for me zip baits but look the cid shiver stick lately has just been dominating it's been a fantastic lure so look while i'm babbling on like a buffoon i suppose we've got a bit more gear to show you but let's cut to some clips of some beautiful taylor action from cameron and scott because lately they've just been on it they've absolutely destroyed me in fact they, they'd have me 10 to none so check this out have a look at their bloody beautiful fishing exploits over the last couple of weeks and i hope you enjoy that and we'll catch you back with some more ultimate gear in a second oh what again <laughs> jesus christ that barely even touched the water then guys Bloody hell, this spot is on fire for Taylor this morning. LV fishing. You gotta love it, eh? Jesus Christ. And I saw morning, it's just on. Go the stick baits. Okay. Ah. And good size fish as well. Oh, it's bending the orbiter rod as well. Yeah, so it's a beautiful bend in the orbiter rod. So. And there we go. That's it. Get a load of that. Gotta love it. Two tailor down within five minutes. And I am probably about three or four casts, so it's not bad. Um, and so I'll get this, get this one put on ice and hopefully get another one. What do you reckon, Scott? Yeah, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Bloody hell. It's on fire. Go the zip bait. I said the LV gear is making light work of this. But you know, <laughs> even taking a little bit of drag, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. And I think I was meant to be working today. We all decided to take a day off to come up uh, for a bit of a fish because the weather was just awesome. Worked out well, I reckon, so. Oh! Taylor came off at the beach. At least I don't need to de-hook it. That's awesome. That's three now. Hopefully Scott can get one. That'll make four. <laughs> I don't know, you seem to have all the luck today. That's it. Pretty good session so far. Oh, you can't complain with the times like this, can you? That's it. Yeah, I'll get this one, put in the esky in. Hopefully get another one. Yep. Yeah. Okay, come on. Well, Scott, about time. About time. I'm gonna get my little back out there to hopefully get another one. Oh! Oh! On oh, as well! <laughs> Double hook up! Look at that. Oh, I dropped it! <laughs> come on! He's following, you'll come. What a prime West Australian Taylor. Beautiful. That's painful. It dropped at the last second. It just. As you can see, some beautiful tailor there that Cameron and Scott on, got on some of these lures that we've mentioned. Now, as the cold is starting to creep in in the morning, it doesn't hurt to rug up a bit. Of course, we've got these beautiful um, on-point shirts, uh, but look, jumpers and all that are a must. But outside the normal realm of jumpers and shirts and so forth, a set of gloves. You know, nothing wrong with looking like a bit of a Michael Jackson. The ones that I've um, found that I like the most are are thinner gloves i mean these are an lv branded glove and these are brilliant for like i think they're 29 bucks 20 to 29 bucks um you know they've got beautiful padding on the inside there which is nice and grippy on the rod but you know they're they're thin enough that they don't uh hinder your knot tying but thick enough also to keep the warmth in but what are we carrying all this stuff in well of course let me just move this out of the way a good wading bag okay a reef bag is always good um you know something here with a lot of pockets so we've got something for our drinks here we put our keys and phone in uh, the fish ruler and then of course the fish go in here with the um tackle box full of lures all right so when it comes to as i said taylor fishing off the beach this is what we're using for our lures keep in mind don't forget a good set of knives is also the way to go um look i usually just have a set stuck in the back of the ute at all times um, you know, in a really nice canvas bag here. Um, so, you know, if anything goes wrong, you don't get stabbed. And um, just make sure you've got all, everything from my, I mean, I use this for a little pin boning knife. We've got a filleting knife, a skinning knife as well. You know, just something that covers everything. So if you're gonna whip, whip off a few tailor fillets, 
for the uh, smoker on the way home, then um, you got the you got the stuff to do. So, so guys, I really hope this helps with the real basic requirements to go chase Taylor. Now, keep in mind, I have outlined today Tassie Devils for seven dollars, all the way up to stick baits that are forty dollars. Don't forget your medals. You can stump, sometimes pick up medals from Kmart for like three bucks, and if the Taylor are fired up, they're going to catch just as well as any. These lures that I've shown you today are really good for when the tailor is slightly more shut down. But guys, I'm not going to keep banging on for much longer because you don't need to hear much more. That's all the gear you need and go get into some. Because as I said, with the winter fast approaching, the big tailor are rocking up on our shores right now. So guys, until the next episode, hope you enjoyed it. Like, share, subscribe, subscribe and let us know what you want to see below. Did you like this style of episode? Because if you did, we can do a lot more of it. All right, guys, till the next one, keep fishing and keep it real. See you later.